Hey guys, it's Jen from OverworldOfGenCraft.com and this is our project for today. No, we're not making all five cards because all five cards are identical. However, we will be making this one right there. So I finally sat down, well, about a month ago and played around with the Brusho colors that came out in Stampin' Up's uh, Occasions Catalog, the 2018 Occasions Catalog. And this is the first time I've ever played with them. I know they've been around and on the market for a little while, but I have not had my hands on these until now. And the one thing that I want to say before we even get started with our project is these are super addicting to play around with. But there is a little bit of a learning curve as well. So what I recommend you do is if you want to dabble in this and kind of start playing around, um, I used watercolor paper for my samples for my card. So grab out some watercolor paper and just play with it. Don't have a plan uh, because you want to find out how it moves when the water is added to it and th there's just so many different things that you can do with it so just sit down and play with it put some on some paper and spritz it and see how it works see how it soaks in um there's and watch youtube videos oh my goodness watch all kinds of youtube videos because there's a lot of different techniques and um, everybody kind of has their own little tips and tricks when it comes to playing around with this product. So let me go over the colors quick. Uh, when I first did my first card with this, I just absolutely loved the way it turned out. I, I kept it fairly simple, yet I wanted to see what each of the colors would look like using the exact same card. So this one here is this moss green and this is the one that actually dealt me uh, more fits than the rest of it. It was my last card, and I redid this two or three different times until I got the exact look that I wanted to. Um, I don't know, you know, if you guys can see this, there's like these purple hues in here and some of the darker greens and lighter greens, and I absolutely love the way this turned out. Um, but to get just the right effect, I did kind of have to play around with that uh, to get it. I guess I said that. This one here is the yellow, and it's not as vibrant, and I feel like my flowers don't stand out as much, but I really do think it turned out pretty. It's still kind of a, a pretty soft color in this. Um, and the amount of powder that you put on is going to dictate the strength that it soaks into your paper as well. So the more color you add to it, the more vibrant it's going to be. Um, and I'll show you a little bit as we get going on the actual tutorial itself. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of more time going over this because I do want to get into my tutorial. Um, but you can always fast forward while I'm talking. <laughs> Gotta love that fast forward button, right? Uh, this one is the Prussian Blue, which I think this one is, is really honestly my favorite, but I'm kind of partial to blue. And then we have our Brilliant Red, but this turned out kind of more, you know, really this dark kind of dark pink, I think, is more like what that turned out to be, but I just think that's absolutely beautiful. And finally, the one that we are actually going to make today, because I just love the way it turned out, is the Gambo Gamboge. Gam I think it's Gamboge. Anyways, the orange. <laughs> that's that's what we're going to refer to it into uh, this uh, in this video. Let's get started. I will show you the supplies that I used and then it, it will be a little bit longer tutorial. Even if I don't talk, there is quite a bit to this technique. So um, and we'll just get started on it. So I did add a little bit of baker's twine for my um, for my little accent here. And then stamp sets are the Oh So Eclectic and the Beautiful Day. I use the flower from this one and the Happy Birthday Sentiment from Beautiful Day. Of course, this card could be used for many different occasions, but I just really like the way this Happy Birthday Sentiment turned out on it. You will need some Versamark because we are going to be doing some emboss resist and embossing. And I use basic black with the Versamark for my sentiment. 
I also used uh, a water brush or an aqua painter and I do have a little water spritzer as well. You can also use just a regular water spritzer bottle thing too. Um, this is just what I had on hand. And then lastly you are probably going to want a little bit of a paper towel to kind of help uh, wipe up some of the extra stuff and I have this craft mat under here that it is an older one I purchased it from close to my heart back when I was a consultant with them But I really love the craft mat because everything wipes off nicely from it um, And I'm sure you can buy this from all kinds of different places um, uh, Stampin up might even have one, but I'm such a bad demonstrator. I really don't know uh, And then lastly you may or may not need to use a heat Well, you actually you do need to use a heat gun for your embossing and then possibly for when you're drying your brush -o. So we are five minutes in and I need to stop talking so I can get to this project um, for paper, I kept this card minimal because I wanted my focus to be on my technique and my front of my card versus um, putting many layers or anything on it. So, Whisper White cardstock, four and a quarter by eleven, scored at five and a half. Basic Black is four by five and a quarter. You'll need. Uh, I used watercolor paper for this technique. I know some use shimmer paper, um, but that is up to you. Uh, watercolor paper is going to be three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And lastly, I have a piece of vellum that is one and a half by three and seven eighths. So let's go ahead and let's get to stamping our flower onto our card front. And for this, I just used my Versamark. And I basically I just put my flowers kind of coming down here at an angle from the upper right down to the lower left. I'm going to pull this down here a little bit. Um, so it's kind of hard to see if you're just at the right angle you can uh, see pretty decently. So I'm going to put another one up there a little bit and then I'm just going to start coming down here with my flower and I'm going to bring it all the way down. I can kind of just barely see where my flowers are. Um, and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect every single time because that's kind of the beauty of this is it is going to turn out differently each time as well. So put one there and then lastly I think I'm just going to put one, if I can see it here, probably just a little bit of one down here in the very corner. And grab out my paper and then I'm going to put white embossing powder on this. I did find that I preferred to use the white versus the clear for this particular part of the project. So, and this is where you're going to see your flowers just kind of start coming to life as that embossing powder hits your Versamark and sticks to it. I did not need to use my embossing buddy on this. Um, I found that it wasn't really necessary, although you could still use it if you'd like, but the embossing powder comes off pretty nicely with this. So I do have a little bit of where my stamp kind of got off and left some Versamark on there that it stuck to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run my heat gun. And so now I'll kind of show you what that looks for now. So you can see all those little flowers that I put on there. Then now comes the kind of fun part. So I wanted to show you a little trick that I learned. And because this mat is slick on the top, you can put adhesive on the back of this and it will stick to the mat, but it will come back up off too. So that way there's less warping when you go to add water to your watercolor paper. Um, I'm using my big gun right now because my fast fuse ran out and I wanted to use an adhesive that was a little bit stronger than my regular Tombow adhesive. So forgive the big gun in the way there. So I'm going to go ahead and this is just, I'm just going to stick this down to my craft mat. It is the coolest thing. The other thing you can do is if you don't have a craft mat, you can use washi tape or a tape that is going to uh, come up off of the edges. But what I like about this is I can go directly to the edge with my color and everything and I don't have those lines that hold it down. So there is 
that. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and grab out my orange and I'm just going to tap my color and I'm going to it's not going to stay perfectly inside of each flower, but I'm going to attempt to keep it just for now because it will naturally spread out, but I'm going to keep it within each of these flowers. So try and shake it out here. I do have holes in the top and I have found that the powder kind of sometimes sticks into those holes so every once in a while I have to just kind of go in and re-poke those holes to get it going again so we'll put that on here on our little flowers and if you guys know of any other tricks or tips um, that helps keep the brush o from sticking in there please let me know in the comments below because I don't know what I'm doing wrong or if that's just kind of how it works, but um, I think I might put just a little bit more in the center of this one. So this is what it's going to look like for now. Um, and the other thing, if you have not worked with brush o, is less is more when it comes to putting this on. The more you put on, the more vibrant your uh, card is going to be in your look. So I'm going to move this out of the way because I don't want that to be ruined because when you go to spray, this stuff just has a tendency to go everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my mister and I'm probably about at least six inches above it and I'm just going to start misting down here onto my paper. Look at that! Is that just not cool? So you can just see it's just coming to life and then that embossing is resisting that color. You can see it kind of starting to spray away from the color. Now, depending on how, how uh, dark you want it, I think I'm going to go ahead and just spray here a little bit more. And I'm going to let this sit for just a little bit. So I think that looks amazing right now, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to give this just a minute. And if you'll notice, the paper is warping just a little bit, but because it's stuck down, it's not really doing it like it would, if, you know, normally if it wasn't stuck down onto the surface. I'm going to take a couple of minutes, uh, pause the video, and I'm going to come back to you after it's had a chance to kind of soak into the watercolor paper. I have let this sit here for approximately about two or three minutes or so. The longer that you leave it without touching it at all, the more it's going to soak down into that water paper and it's going to stay just this vibrant. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold up this paper towel that I have and I'm just going to start kind of dabbing in the center of each of my flowers just to kind of get that excess water up. And then I think I'm still going to just leave um, the color to kind of soak in a little bit. And what I might go ahead and do is I wanted to have more of the color spread out to these. I didn't necessarily want to leave these completely white, although you, you could if you wanted to. So I'm just going to very lightly kind of shake on just a little bit more color. And I'm going to spritz it once again. And just let that color kind of spread. The other thing that you can do is you can bring your heat gun in. If you're a little impatient, you kind of want this to start drying a little faster, or you don't want it to be as vibrant, so you can take your heat gun and you can actually move some of the color around. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this around a little bit with my heat gun and the same over here. And this corner over here is kind of bugging me a little bit. So you can also take some of this color and you can manipulate it as well just with the water brush. So if you wanted to get maybe just a little more color going in this area, you can do that as well. Now I've noticed, like I do have some pooling coming up, so what I'll do is I'll take my paper towel 
and come just kind of along the edge and that helps draw up some of that water that's pooling. And I'm not quite ready to remove all of it from my flowers because I love how vibrant these are towards the center. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of come around my edge and, and get some of that water up. And you can also just kind of come in here very carefully and dab up some of it too. But I don't want to remove a ton of the color before it's completely ready. So you see how that comes up if you if you remove it too fast then it doesn't have time to soak down into the the paper. I think I'm going to get kind of down here a little bit maybe here and then I'm going to go ahead and take my draw uh, my heat gun again and just kind of try to dry up some of these areas here because they are definitely pooling um, and I don't want to use this because it will pull up the ink instead of push it down into the watercolor. And I think what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and kind of dab some of these places. The other uh, fun thing that you can do with this is if you're not 100% thrilled with the results, you can always go back and you can add more to it. So um, I think I think I might actually leave this one and I'm just going to come back and go back over this and kind of pick up the rest of that color so my embossing powder shows that resist shows a little bit more. All right, I think this is good. So I'm gonna pull this off. Is that just not the coolest thing? And I'm gonna run, it's still a little wet on the back, so I'm gonna go ahead and run my heat gun on it and finish drying it and then I'll come back. So this is dry enough now and I'm gonna add a little bit more adhesive to the center because there is some warping going on and I wanted to have it lay as flat as possible. Um, I don't, I kind of like the, a little bit of waviness or texture to it, but I, I don't want it to be, you know, super wavy or textured or whatever it is. Um, and then I'm going to set this aside before I stick it on to my basic black because we're not done embossing yet. You're going to need your Versamark and your basic black and a clean stamp. So I'm gonna clean this and be right back. I have a confession to make. I have already made this card today on a different video and I, my husband was so stinking sweet yesterday. He went out and he bought me a new mic for my setup. I don't know if you guys noticed the difference. Hopefully you noticed the difference. <laughs> but I think it was time for me to get a new mic to get rid of some of the background noise and so I just did this 27 minute video. Of course, I hadn't edited it yet, but 27 minutes and I go to start editing it and there was buzzing through part of it. And I, I, it was so bad I couldn't use it. So that is why my stamp was a little dirty. So I went ahead and I inked it first in my Versamark and then I inked it up in my basic black. And then I'm going to just come up here kind of towards the top portion of this and hopefully centered. My angle is kind of weird here. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, and then I'm going to bring in my clear embossing powder this time and I'm going to emboss the sentiment. You do not have to emboss the sentiment. I think it would be just as beautiful with uh, just the basic black ink. However, I kind of liked the extra dimension and texture that it gave it and I really did want it to stand out um, from the background because the background is so vibrant. Um, I just wanted a little bit more of a pop with my sentiment. That turns out so pretty on that vellum, isn't it? Look at that. All right, let us get to this is going to get stuck down on top of 
I'm running out of room here. I need more room down here to... So let's do the happy birthday and I'm just going to go ahead and put my adhesive right on the back side of my vellum underneath of where the sentiment is. And that is just going to come on top of here, probably about three quarters of an inch from the bottom of it. And then this whole piece is going to get adhered to our basic black. And I used I just kept my colors, lack of colors, I guess, just a basic black and white because I wanted my card to be simple and have my focal point on my background. Then let's grab out some twine and that is going to just get wrapped around a couple times. Let me find the right end here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive on here to begin with. And I'm just gonna wrap my twine around a couple times and then we're gonna tie a bow on it. So I'll just bring that over to the back side of it, clip it off, and let's tie a bow. I'm just gonna wrap it around the twine. Sometimes baker's twine kinda doesn't wanna make the nicest of bows I kind of struggle with. It has a mind of its own, I swear. So I'm just gonna grab this center knot and pull in. You see this, I kind of got to manipulate that into uh, working the way I want it to. So pull it just a little bit more in on either side and then we're just gonna call it good. So let's get some adhesive on the rest of this. And I'm just gonna go back over my twine just to make sure that it stays put. And that is going to go onto our Whisper White. Like so. And that, my friends, my YouTube friends, is it. This is our card. So there's the two together and they're similar, but as you can see, they're not identical, but I just absolutely love um, how it turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll bring back in the other colors so you can have one more peek at all of them. And I thank you very much for hanging out with me and uh, playing with me. There it is, all five colors of just yummy goodness. If you guys would like, I will have uh, dimensions on a PDF that you can download and print over on my website, worldofgencraft.com. And uh, yeah, thank you. I'll see you guys on my next tutorial. Hope you guys have a good one. Bye.